Captain Ibrahim Trahore, the dynamic leader of Burkina Faso, has recently made headlines by announcing a sweeping ban on gold exports from the country. This bold move is part of a larger strategy aimed at reclaiming national control over Burkina Faso's abundant gold resources and ensuring that the wealth generated from these resources benefits the country's citizens. Trahori's decision underscores his commitment to ending foreign exploitation of Burkina Faso's natural wealth and promoting sustainable, equitable economic development. As one of the world's major gold producers, Burkina Faso's new policy is poised to have significant ramifications not only for the nation's economy, but also for the global gold market. This unprecedented step marks a turning point in Burkina Faso's approach to its natural resources and signals a new era of economic sovereignty and self-reliance. Gold mining, a practice with a rich history, has fascinated people and driven economic growth worldwide for centuries. From ancient times to modern industrial practices, the search for gold has influenced history and remains significant today. Can you identify a country where the president has the power to expel all international gold mining companies exploiting its gold reserves? Captain Ibrahim Trahori of Burkina Faso has made such a historic decision. He carefully assembled influential allies before making this bold move. Captain Trahori revoked the mining permits of all foreign companies, including Russian ones, to reclaim control of the country's resources. It seems he discovered the secretive operations of multinational corporations in Burkina Faso. But how did he manage to cancel the licenses? And what are his plans for the vast amounts of gold that will stay in the country? We will learn more from this video. Captain Trahori couldn't understand why Burkina Faso remained one of the world's poorest countries despite its rich gold deposits. He knew that France, the former colonial power, hindered the country's ability to develop an independent gold industry through unfair trade agreements that benefited France disproportionately. During his military service, Captain Trahori noticed that French companies were prioritized for mining licenses and that Burkina Faso's gold exports were subject to unfavorable pricing. France did not support the local gold mining industry, instead promoting reliance on foreign technology and expertise, which prevented the transfer of knowledge and skills to local citizens. This dependence on foreign actors made it harder for Burkina Faso to lead in gold mining. Aware of France's detrimental policies in the Sahel, Captain Trahori aimed to liberate Burkina Faso from this cycle. He recognized France's excessive political influence over Burkina Faso, which ensured policies favored French mining interests. This included lobbying against policies that promoted local control of gold resources and pressuring the government to favor French companies. To break free from the systemic trap, were the CFA franc, a currency used by several West African countries, was used to exploit the gold industry, Captain Trahori consolidated his powers. The fixed exchange rate of the CFA franc to the euro reduced Burkina Faso's export competitiveness and potential gold export earnings. France manipulated the CFA franc's value after acquiring significant amounts of gold from Burkina Faso, paying less than the original price. This exploitation highlighted France's primary interest in benefiting from Burkina Faso's resources with little regard for the country's development. Since taking office over a year ago, Captain Trahori has pursued his plans. In a dramatic move that reverberated across Africa and beyond, he announced the expulsion of all foreign mining companies to regain control of Burkina Faso's gold resources. This decision directly impacted major companies like B2 Gold, Nordgold, Endeavor Mining, Semafo, Fortuna Silver Mines, and Hummingbird Resources, disrupting Western businesses accustomed to exploiting Africa's riches. Trahor's move was more than defiance against Burkina Faso's complex relationship with France. It was a calculated effort to ensure that the country's gold reserves benefit its citizens rather than foreign companies. This aligns with other African leaders' sentiments who have watched Western corporations exploit their natural resources, leaving them impoverished. In addition to expulsions, Trahori significantly changed mining regulations during high gold prices, increasing royalty fees. This aimed to ensure a fairer distribution of wealth for the Burkina by people, especially after mine closures due to security concerns following recent coups. However, the expulsion of Nordgold, 
a major Russian mining company previously seen as an alley, raised questions about favoritism. The government strongly denied accusations that Nordgold's permit was granted due to political connections, insisting it was based on merit. Allegations about Burkina Faso hiring Russian Wagner Group mercenaries and using mining profits to pay them added complexity, despite government denials. This lack of transparency increased international scrutiny and speculation, highlighting the long-standing exploitative relationship between Western corporations and Africa. Western corporations have profited greatly from Africa's resources, often trapping countries in poverty and dependence. Trahora's actions reflect a growing movement among African leaders challenging the notion that their continent is merely a source of cheap resources and demanding a fairer share of wealth. Trahori's decision asserts his right to self-determination and challenges the Western narrative of Africa as a supplier of inexpensive resources. His bold move could inspire other African nations to take control of their destinies. Burkina Faso's history is being rewritten by Trahori's actions, which, despite the challenges ahead, have sparked hope across Africa with his support for resource nationalism and sovereignty. This story is not just about gold. It's about a nation seizing its future. Captain Trahori's defiance of Western exploitation and encouragement of African leaders to claim their rightful share of wealth may significantly impact Africa and the global order. People are watching to see what Trahori will do next after expelling the multinational gold mining companies. Under Captain Ibrahim Trahori's determined leadership, Burkina Faso is challenging foreign dominance and regaining control of its gold reserves. Despite security concerns impacting companies like the UK-based Barrow Mine, Burkina Faso remains committed to self-sufficiency. The new gold refinery marks the beginning of an era focused on sustainable and ethical development, maximizing the potential of the country's mineral wealth. Previously, Burkina Faso had to export raw gold, missing out on additional income from refining. Now, with its refinery, Burkina Faso will determine its fair share on site. Contrary to expectations, Captain Trahori expelled the Russian mining company, Nordgold, despite Burkina Faso's need to maintain relations with Russia, a new ally. Captain Trahori aims to separate Burkina Faso's relations with Russia from mining permissions, avoiding the mistake of letting new allies exploit the country's gold. He acknowledges the contributions of companies like Nordgold, but emphasizes social justice and economic freedom. The movement for self-reliance, led by Trahori, is gaining momentum across Africa. The fight for gold sovereignty in Burkina Faso continues as countries reclaim control of their resources and seek fair global shares. Captain Trahori's leadership offers hope for a future where natural wealth empowers people and supports sustainable development. Though challenges remain, his spirit of self-reliance and determination provide optimism. This story is more than just about gold, it's about a nation's journey toward self-determination and asserting its rightful place in the world. Nordgold has been crucial in Burkina Faso's mining sector, demonstrating its ability to find high-quality projects, construct, and initiate mining operations quickly. The Bissa mine, launched in January 2013, highlights Nordgold's successful entry into African mining. The Bissa mine's construction was completed within the planned 15 months, under budget, and achieved a remarkable payback period of 21 months when it became operational in September 2016. In 2016, Nordgold also built a heap leach plant at the nearby Bully deposit, expanding the Bissa mine. This decision was backed by successful exploration efforts that discovered a significant low-grade gold resource close to the Bissa site. The Bully project had a payback period of 33 months from commissioning and was completed on time and within budget in 13 months. Bully shares facilities such as camps, labs, and power generation with Bissa and is managed by the same team. Nordgold holds a 90% interest in the Bissa and Bully mines, with the remaining 10% owned by the Burkina Faso government. These mines operate as modern open pit operations selectively mining or categorizing materials into laterite, saprolite, transition, and fresh materials. Nordgold supports over 1,300 jobs. To produce gold on-site, the processing plant uses a conventional carbon-in-leach circuit. 
Unlike Western gold mining firms that usually invest very little in the region, Nordgold has invested $1.3 billion in Burkina Faso since 2009. As part of its commitment to Burkina Faso, Nordgold has implemented advanced solutions such as the Delco Fleet Management System, LS Fuel Management System, and Laboratory Information Management System across the production value chain. These investments leverage the region's geological expertise, benefit from a skilled workforce, and achieve economies of scale through infrastructure sharing. Nordgold has paid approximately $60 million in taxes and royalties to Burkina Faso, making it one of the most profitable mining operations in the country. Around 95% of Nordgold's workforce are Burkina Faso nationals. However, Captain Ibrahim Trahori became aware of foreign companies exploiting Burkina Faso. Shocking revelations exposed a troubling situation where impoverished people were allegedly denied $16.5 million in royalties from gold mining. This substantial amount, essential for funding vital public services, was reportedly forfeited due to a special low-tax arrangement established with Nordgold during Blaise Compare's administration. This staggering figure greatly exceeds the $1 million allocated by the government for national school supplies this year. Nordgold, owned by one of Russia's wealthiest individuals, Alexis Mordashov, with an estimated net worth of $19 billion, is said to have benefited from this favorable tax deal. However, this was not an isolated incident. The surge in gold production began in 2002, coinciding with a significant rise in gold prices. Concerns about the government's insufficient benefit from this commodity led to an increase in royalty rates on gold in 2010 under the then-government of Blaise Compaire. This new floating royalty mechanism was tied to the global gold market. Data from Burkina Faso's Minister of Mines indicates that Nordgold saves $16.5 million due to this low-tax guarantee, known as a Fiscal Stability Clause. These agreements were initially introduced to attract foreign companies worried about uncertain political and fiscal environments, but have since become controversial as they seem to override any future changes to a country's legislation. Surprisingly, even though the Burkina Faso government tried to charge higher royalties in 2011, Nordgold's complaint reportedly led to the confirmation of the tax regime. It was evident from Nordgold's own disclosures and annual reports that every foreign gold mining company operating in Burkina Faso was engaging in illicit gold mining activities. Captain Ibrahim Trahori only needed to wait for their licenses to expire to request renewals. To avoid negotiating agreements, Captain Ibrahim Trahori has chosen not to grant any more licenses. He decided to cancel rather than renew the foreign company's previous licenses due to their low tax terms. If renewed, the percentages would have remained the same, but Trahore sought to negotiate new terms. The unexpected expulsion of the Russian company came as a surprise, even though it was anticipated that Trahore would remove French, Canadian, and UK-based businesses. Trahori's decision to revoke licenses and seek new partnerships can be seen as a firm demonstration of his commitment to treating all allies fairly. He argued that agreements should be restructured to maximize profits for Burkina Faso rather than merely benefiting foreign corporations. The idea is to renegotiate agreements so that Burkina Faso's interests and welfare are prioritized, ensuring the country becomes the primary beneficiary of its gold resources. Profits from new gold mines can fund crucial initiatives such as poverty reduction, infrastructure development, health care, and education. Burkina Faso aims to break the cycle of dependency on foreign aid and create its own path towards sustainable development by investing in its people and infrastructure. This bold move serves as a powerful example of how African countries can reclaim control over their natural resources and negotiate more equitable agreements that benefit their citizens, with potential far-reaching effects across the continent, paving the way for more equitable wealth and resource distribution. The exploitation of resources by foreign corporations has led to a cycle of economic dependency for many African countries, 
often hindering sustainable growth and limiting economic diversification. The termination of gold licenses in Burkina Faso has sparked discussions about the broader dynamics of resource-rich African nations. Many countries struggle to balance maximizing their natural resources' economic potential while maintaining their social and environmental fabric. They should look to Ibrahim Trahor's actions as a model, with African leaders striving to break free from Western dependency and support their countries in building a united Africa. As the dust settles on this bold and controversial decision, the world watches to see how Burkina Faso's mining industry will adapt and its impact on the country's future. Will this move aid or hinder the country's economic progress? Will it lead to a more responsible and sustainable mining industry? The full implications of this historic decision and its long-term effects on Burkina Faso's gold mining industry will only become clear with time. What do you think about this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Do not forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Turn on the notifications bell for more informative videos like this one.